Adams, the Steve Adams Trophy, Jimmy Marshall Ray, Jimmy Dean, Jenny Smith, Don Adams, Army Navy football captains and stars, Rita Camp, as an extra added attraction, Errol Flynn, plus Louie Nye, Tom Poston, Don Knotts, Kitch Henderson, and the orchestra, and yours truly, Gene Rayburn. Brought to you tonight by Coldine Cold Medicine, the most powerful cold remedy you can buy without a prescription. Wonderful, Wonderful fresh, 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 day, day, fresh, fresh. And the Greyhound Corporation. Remember, it's such a comfort to take the bus. And leave the driving to us. And now here he is, the star of our show, Steve Allen. Howie, howdy. <coughs> This may turn out to be National Smoked Ham Week or something. I dare say there isn't a man jack of you in the country who doesn't know what I'm about to call this. <laughs> You've all seen the comedy programs. You want to join me? We'll all do the joke together. What is it, audience? A smoking jacket. That's right. $400 for no laugh. How do you like that? It's a pretty stupid idea. Anyway... <laughs> It's, uh, we're having barbecued ribs here any minute, I think. <laughs> it's a little bit dangerous. Anyway, Merry Christmas, as long as I'm still with you. And, <laughs> as you can see, we're getting... Do you think I look a little awkward? <laughs> we're getting ready for the holiday season, and it's really a wonderful time of the year, except for one thing. I actually think that Christmas is getting too commercial, don't you, Bill? Yeah. It really is. Every place you look, you see these ads in the magazines with... Santa Claus selling neckties, you know, when he's on television selling automobiles, and Santa Claus is selling wristwatches and soft drinks. If this keeps up, I can just see Santa Claus come tumbling down the chimney, jumps into the room, and he says, Ho, 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 but first a word from my sponsor. <laughs> It'll come to that any day. Anyway, we do, to play it straight for a second or two, want to be one of the first anyway to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a holiday season. One of the other people who wants to say just about the same thing is my talented friend, young Jimmy Dean, down here. Hi, Jimmy. Steve. How you doing? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Lovely weather. What with the snow outside and the smoke yeah. inside? Great. Are you going to be, uh... <coughs> oh, dear. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're not either. <laughs> You're going to be able to sing with all this smoke? <coughs> we'll do the best we can. I think this jacket once belonged to Otto Harbach. <laughs> No kidding, I gotta get out of this. I'm burning up. Can I help you? Uh, well, yeah. Thanks. Oh, boy. <laughs> Whoop. You're about to see there a TV go. first, ladies and gentlemen. There we a just human... found two floor directors. You'll see a human death right before your very eyes. <laughs> Let Ed Sullivan top that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jim, we're going to uh, be very honored right now by having one of the, the biggest Christmas record hits of the season. That's your, your brand new record hit, Sandy Slayfoot. So if you're all set to throw her on the fire, I guess we're ready to hear it. I'm ready. Here we go. Now his name was Sandy Slayfoot, and oh so sad was he. For though he stood just four feet tall, his feet were three foot three. Now he tried to help make Santa's toys, but with his feet so long, but he'd trip and fall and break them all. Just everything went wrong. Now little Sandy Slayfoot, don't you feel so blue? Even with your feet so long, God has a place for you. The other kids made fun of him. They laughed at him with glee. But Sandy Slayfoot learned one day, without skis, he could ski. So when the night for Christmas Eve, the reindeer stable burned, he skied downhill and saved the deer, remembering what he'd learned. Everybody loves him, and Santa loves him too. And ever since on Christmas Eve, he's helped bring gifts to you. made fun. 
fun of him and laughed at him with glee. The Sandy Slayfoot learned one day without skis he could ski. But in the night for Christmas Eve, the reindeer stable burned. Well, he skied downhill and saved the deer, remembering what he'd learned. Everybody loves him, and old Santa loves him too. And ever since on Christmas Eve, he's held rain gifts to you. Thank you very much, Jimmy Dean. Well, we got all the fire out. It's time to bring on a wonderful young comedian right now, a man by the name of Don Adams. But <clears throat> first, that's the words they always say. But first, I want you to see something. See what we have here? That sneaky? I'm telling you, those Coldine folks think of everything. You'd never guess that this was a chest rub, would you? Well, it is, by golly. And what's more, this Coldine stick chest rub combines the most <clears throat> most modern and effective ingredients in the easiest to use form that you've ever tried. You see how it works? Like a king-size lipstick. Your fingers never touch it. Goldeen Stick Chest Rub is the only one you can use without getting yourself or the youngsters all greasy and messy. And you don't like greasy youngsters, do you? No. Of course not. There's no <laughs> sticky stuff all over the sheets and pajamas, and none on you. When you rub Goldeen Stick across the chest, forehead, and nostrils, it goes to work fast. And its vapors are inhaled instantly. Congestion starts to break up immediately because Coldine Stick Chest Rub has no grease to hold back the medicated vapors. So for feelable pain relief in seconds without grease or discomfort, look for this red display at your drugstore and get new Coldine Stick Chest Rub. You know, in show business parlance, a uh, monologist is a comedian who just sort of stands up here in one, that's the phrase, it means right out here downstage. <laughs> and uh, the fellow just stands out here in one, and he delivers a monologue. He has nothing going for him but words. He has no songs, no funny dances. So here now is one of America's brightest new monologists, Don Adams. <laughs> Don, what are you going to do for us tonight? Well, first, Steve, I'd like to sing a few songs, and then I'll go into my funny dance. Thanks a lot. I saw you scratching your forehead. Would you give me a little one here? That's fine. Here he is, Don Adams. Listen to this now. It's football season and all that jazz. Good evening. It's uh, my pleasure to spend the next few minutes with you, and I, uh, I cut a little article out of the paper that I thought might, have be, might be of some interest to you folks who are going Christmas shopping. It's, uh, it says that they're developing a new car that will be powered by electricity. And, uh, and this electrically powered car will cost about $5,000. That's uh, $1,000 for the car and $4,000 for the extension cord. <laughs> it might be a nice present. I imagine that a lot of the folks looking in tonight are married, especially the men. And, uh, <laughs> and those of you who are married are probably very familiar with the thing called women's intuition. Yes. Well, for those of you who are still bachelors and don't know too much about this, I should like to explain briefly how it works. For example, it's a cold morning, and the car won't start. And you've tried everything that you know how. You've cleaned the spark plugs, you've cleaned the carburetor, you've charged the battery. Nothing helps. The car won't start. And your wife walks in, and you say, honey, the car won't start. And she says, of course, the bolt is loose on the license plate. <laughs> so you smile and you tighten the bolt on the license plate. Not only does the car stop, <laughs> but the dashboard clock that hasn't worked in four years <laughs> starts ticking like Big Ben. 
If something goes wrong with the television set, you don't send out for anybody, you don't bother with tubes, you go downstairs to the basement and you tap a certain pipe. <laughs> three times. Sometimes you tap the wrong pipe and you have to be led back down again like a child. <laughs> I was working in the workshop the other day with an electric drill, and the electric drill wouldn't work. And I said, honey, the electric drill won't work. And she said, change your shoes. <laughs> so I put on a pair of old white sneakers, and the electric drill still wouldn't work. I said, honey, I changed my shoes, and the electric drill still won't work. And she said, stupid. I said, change the fuse. Who ever heard of making an electric drill work by changing the shoes? <laughs> This, this is the way it usually works. Uh, this naturally brings us to the subject of football. <laughs> I have just returned from visit to my home, which is in New York, upstate New York, and while I was there, I went back to my old grammar school and I visited all my old teachers. They all remembered me. I just graduated last September. <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. I'm a college man. I went to a little university in upstate New York, a small school. You've probably never even heard of it. Glick. <laughs> it's a small school. Anyway, we had a man up there, and he was a football coach, and he was one of the great football coaches. As a matter of fact, he was known in sports circles. Well, he was known just everywhere. We, we just used to like to think of him as Mr. Football. Leon Football was his name. <laughs> and I'll never forget the day that we played State University. It was during halftime, and he was giving us one of his magnificent pep talks. All right, men. I'm not going to stand up here today and give you one of my magnificent pep talks. I'm not going to remind you of your old alma mater. I'm not going to remind you of the honor and the glory of this school and its great colors, which have gone unblemished for the past week and a half. <laughs> no, I'm just going to remind you of the bets we have on this game. <laughs> We're loaded up to here. Those bookies mean business. <laughs> now, men, we've got a job to do. We've got the players to do it with. Now, go ahead, and we expected bigger things from you this year in the country. <laughs> well, just don't sit there when I'm talking. <laughs> That's better. Now, Zafmar, you're a good end. And Hopnagel, you're a good halfback. And a good end and a good halfback go hand in hand. But not on the campus. <laughs> student body a feeling of insecurity. <laughs> now, why can't you men try and be more like Jonesy? Incidentally, I want to commend Jonesy in the magnificent way that he tried to block that kick in the first quarter. Took real guts and courage the way he dashed in there like a maniac. <laughs> By the way, where is Jonesy? <laughs> is that? What's he lying there for? <laughs> and stop sticking your tongue out at me. I'm your coach. <laughs> What's that? It's not his tongue. <laughs> well, somebody get that football out of his mouth. <laughs> One thing I can't stand, it's shirkers. <laughs> All right, men, I've tried to do everything in my power to help you win this game. I want to apologize about using the poison gas in the first quarter. <laughs> As you know, the wind was blowing the wrong way. <laughs> and among other things, we lost our entire cheering section. <laughs> Yes, well, nobody feels this more than I do, because as you all know, before becoming head coach here this morning, <laughs> I was assistant cheerleader for 27 years. And so at this time, I should like to lead you in one of my favorite cheers. All right? Everybody up. Boomalaka, 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 boom. Boomalaka, boomalaka, boom, boom. A linga laka, a linga laka. A 
ling a rang a tang a rick, a rick a ticky tack, a rang a rick a zack, a rack a lacky bo. A ring a ting, a rick a ticky tack, a brow wax a wax a wax, brow wax a wax, hi ho, hi ho, walla go walla go wax. A rang a ting, a rick a ling. Ring a ting a lang a rang. A rang a tang, a rick a ticky tack. A ring a lack a boom. A ring a zing. A rang a lang a boom. Ring a tang. A ring a rack. A ring a ticky tack. A rang a lack a boom. Yay, glick. Kind of gets you right in here, doesn't it? Makes you sick to your stomach. All right, men, before sending you back out to that slaughterhouse, I just want to go over one or two more things. There have been some nasty, vicious, ugly rumors going around that I have tried to fix the examination papers and trigonometry of some of the members of this squad. And these ugly, vicious, nasty rumors have been directed at some of our new boys that we recruited from the Mau Mau. <laughs> All right, Ben, stop rattling those spears. <laughs> In leaving you, I should just like to leave you with the words of the founder of Brick University, Morris L. University, <laughs> who said... <laughs> Boomalaka, Boomalaka. <laughs> Great, isn't it? We enjoy Don's work very much, and that's why we keep bringing him back. He's just about a, a regular member of our family. For some reason or other, I have a habit. I don't know when I got into it, but I, I have a habit of wondering. <laughs> I have a habit of wondering what's going on. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Well, I'll tell you a little later what I was wondering. We'll get right down to business now. Sorry, I got nothing for you to eat. Martha Ray will be out here in a moment, but right now we do have a question for Steve Arino. Steve-o, how do you feel about mystery stories, huh? I'm a kind of a collector <laughs> myself. I like all kinds. And here's one of my favorites. A mystery the Greyhound people are solving every day, fair weather or foul. Watch this. What is the mystery of bus 509? Why are these three people on it? A businessman? A middle-aged woman? and the man who keeps his eyes closed. Mystery? There's really no mystery. Listen, on a 200-mile trip like this, the bus gives me a chance to work. No car to park, either. I'm visiting my children. It's so safe and comfortable to go by Greyhound. I'm a lazy kind of guy. Like to just sit back, relax, and grab a nap. There's no mystery about why people go Greyhound. Remember, Relaxing while we're riding in a Greyhound bus. We're seeing all the scenery and comfort plus. It's such a comfort to take the bus and leave the driving to us in a Greyhound bus. Lucky us in a Greyhound bus. Say just a couple of seconds here to give you a little reading tip. My good friend Earl Wilson has a book out that you, I think you probably will enjoy reading. It's called The NBC Book of Stars. And just about every one of your NBC favorites is uh, written about in this uh, very entertaining book. I'm sure they'll have it at your neighborhood drugstore or bookstore very soon. The NBC book stars for Earl Wilson. Now, I promised you a moment ago, Martha Ray, and uh, here she comes. We've all watched the, uh, the Hit Parade television show for a good many years. I know I have. It's a program that's noted for the flawlessness of its production. There's practically never a misstep by a dancer or a, a goof note by a singer, a mistake on the part of the production crew. And I'm sure the show will continue to be as good as it always has been, but how many of us ever really appreciate what an accomplishment that is in relation to that show or any other? There's so many things, you know, that could go wrong with a TV show. Most of them just rehearse for three, four days, some even less than that. And right now, Martha Ray is going to do a hit parade extra. We'll do it first the right way, in the flawless hit parade way, let's say. And then we'll go back and Martha will do the number again. And the second time, you'll see what might happen if things got a little hung up some night. Here we are first, 
the correct way. And now, a hit parade extra. It's five o'clock. Time to close shop and dance out on the sunny side of the street. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. I used to walk in the shade. Those blues are all red, but I'm not afraid. Rover crossed over. Heaven got her set. I've ripped and from the fella. Those are set my feet. There's the number, just about perfectly. <laughs> a little badge fell off there, but those, that's show business. But uh, actually, when you stop to consider that these numbers only, as I say, get a day or two rehearsal, it's really remarkable that they're as good as they are, most of them. The average Broadway show, for example, to do a number like that would have maybe four or five or six weeks of rehearsal. So now we're going to see the same number again, this time as it might be performed on a television show if fate stepped in and things went wrong. Here it is. And now, a hit parade extra. It's five o'clock. Time to close shop and dance out on the sunny side of the street. <laughs> we almost were in big trouble. Things almost went right. <laughs> we had a number of things planned to explode or something, and they were going just beautifully the second time. Well, that's television for you. <laughs> Martha will be back a little bit later. As a matter of fact, we'll be back in a minute ourselves. And uh, I want you to stick right along on the NBC party line here, because as soon as we tidy up, Dinah Shore will be along. She has a lot of wonderful guests tonight, Jimmy Durante and Rosano Brazzi, and just a great lineup of people. It'll be the usual wonderful Dinah Shore show. And we will be back with Earl Flynn and Martha Ray and Rita Gam and a lot of wonderful people and the Army and Navy football captains will show you some film of their exciting uh, game right after station identification.
Rosano Brazzi and Jimmy Durante join the Dinah Shore Chevy Show in color tonight. On the old Tonight Show, we used to have, well, we had 90 minutes a week, so we could kind of just uh, slurp along at any speed we wanted. I, didn't have, I don't have time now to read the letters I used to, but I'm going to take just a couple of seconds here because we got a big kick out of this one up at the office. It's on the stationery of the Chamber of Commerce of Little Rock, Arkansas, and since there's been some bad news out of Little Rock the last few months, I thought a little bit of good news, something on the light side, might uh, sort of give you as much amusement as it did us. It's from R.W. Hedges. And uh, it'll be a particular interesting thing to all you folks who are fans of the man on the street portion of our program and who isn't. Uh, you know, Don Knotts, he's a little shaky fellow when I say, are you nervous? He says, no. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Hedges suggests that we work into an interview. We weren't able to do that, but I did want to tell you about his letter, that I ask uh, Don Knotts the question, do you know the name of the new mayor of Little Rock, Arkansas? Because the answer is, no. That's actually the man's name, Warner Noop. <laughs> it's spelled K-N-O-O-P. And Mr. Hedges says, Warner's life hasn't been the same since our program <laughs> has been seen down there lately. Everybody keeps saying, are you nervous, Warner? And he says, noop, and they have a lot of fun down there in Little Rock. Now, I want you to see something. Isn't that a pretty album cover? Well, it should be because it contains a lot of very pretty music sung by a very pretty girl. Her name is Jenny Smith, and it doesn't take much intelligence to predict she's going to be one of the big stars of next season. Here she is to tell us that sometimes she's happy. Jenny Smith. Thank you. 
case you tuned in late and wondered who the pretty girl was singing, her name is Jenny Smith, and we'll be having her back on the show, I'll tell you that. Now, in a moment, we're going to meet the Army and Navy football captains and stars, but first I want to tell you about a little interesting research I've learned about on how people select deodorants. As I think I told you a couple of weeks ago, I've discovered that they keep switching from brand to brand. Would you go along with that, Bill? Yeah. Mm hmm And you know why they keep switching? Because they are looking for one that works but does not irritate. So uh, that's why more and more of them these days are ending up with either fresh roll-on, fresh stick, or fresh cream. I suggest that one of these three is for you because they do the work, but they do not irritate. And that's a special good news to people like myself who are sort of the fair skin type. Sometimes you have a problem. A lot of you folks, you know, can't even go out in strong sunshine without being extra careful. So if you're looking for safety and effectiveness, look for fresh. Fresh deodorant stop all the moisture. It's safe to stop. It's not safe to stop at all, is it? No, of course not. Stop it all, you'll explode all over the whole neighborhood, and you don't want to do that. So use fresh. We use it at our place, and uh, if you have your pick, as you know, of the three, fresh roll-on, fresh cream, and fresh stick. Right, Daisy? Right, Mr. Allen. Fresh stick, fresh for Luella Parsons here any minute. <laughs> anyway, these are perhaps the two most famous animals in the country right now. I'm keeping my hands on the thing here. I don't want to get hung up. But uh, these animals were seen by over 100,000 spectators yesterday at the Municipal Stadium in Philadelphia and by millions more on the NBC television uh, network. The big event, of course, was the 68th annual Army-Navy football game played on a rain-swept, muddy field. The final score of the game, as most of you know, was Navy 14, Army 0. Now I'd like you to meet the first, the captain of the Army team, Jim Carnan. Here comes Jim. <laughs> and next, the captain of the... <laughs> Are we all right? Yeah. The uh, captain of the Navy team, Ned Oldham. Here's Ned. Now, Jim, in a uh, very fine pregame story in Sports Illustrated, it said that Army uh, has been bludging, bludgeoning the opposition with power plays that have brought them at least three touchdowns in every game this season. Yesterday, however, uh, you fellas were unable to score. Now, do you think that the muddy field might have had anything to do with that? Well, I don't know. See, the way we went into it, it didn't matter if it rained, snowed, or what came, but uh, I think the mud hurt us a little. I see. Well, Ned, you certainly had quite a day for yourself. As those of us who saw the game are aware, you scored all of Navy's points uh, by running for two touchdowns and kicking both the extra points. And, uh, yes, sir, Steve, I'd like to say that it was a team victory all the way with the coaches and the team and the brigade behind us the whole time. Well, I... Jim, who would you say were some of the outstanding uh, Army players yesterday? I think uh, most of the boys did a fine job, but one player in particular, I think, did an excellent job with Vin Barton. Your fullback, huh? Well, we have Vince here, too. <laughs> he sure is good typecasting for a fullback, isn't he? Very big husky fella. Vince, we're going to look at some film right now, and first we'll see the Army attack in action. Do we have the film in there, fellas? First, we'll see, uh, is it up? Yeah, here we go. Halfback Pete Dawkins turning the end for 10 yards. Ooh, there he goes. And next, you'll see quarterback Dave Borland on a uh, rollout throw a strike to Dawkins, who is down on the Navy 29, right there. And now quarterback Borland fakes to Vince Sparta here as he clears the way for a six-yard gain by Dawkins. And we'll see a little more film in just a moment. Ned, I don't want to embarrass you by asking... Uh, 
who was selected as the outstanding Navy player in yesterday's game, but everybody knows who it was. It was you. <laughs> and uh, while the fellows are winding up the uh, film machine, I just want to take a couple of seconds, incidentally, because I know a lot of their friends are looking into. I want to meet these guys who are in charge of the mascots before we wind up. What's your name? Vince Panay. Vince, nice to meet you. And the Army man here? Tom Cleffy. Tom Cleffy. Tom, why does this mule have... Oh, yeah. Why does this Army mule have AA on the... Uh, South portion there. <laughs> Does that mean a Army? That's Army brand, Steve. I see. Oh, well, there's two A's back there. I thought it was uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or something. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I just wanted to clear that up. Now we'll see the uh, film of the Navy uh, fellas uh, going into action here. I guess we'll be set to roll it in just a couple of seconds. And the first play will show you Navy quarterback Tom Forrest all connecting with a short pass to Ned Oldham. The laterals to Ray Welburn, and it's a 20 yard gain. And then you'll see uh, Navy Captain Ned Oldham here going to the outside. Now watch this one. Pretty tricky. Ooh. <laughs> and now Ned gets the ball and the uh, Army cannot hold him. Watch this one very carefully. He scores from six yards out. Looks like he cannot move ahead. There's a whole meeting there and he suddenly walks out of it. See that? <laughs> Here's uh, Army fullback Vince Barta punting the ball. Oldham catches it and brings the crowd to his feet, to its feet with a really brilliant run back to score Navy's second touchdown. There he goes all the way. Almost, but not quite. Yeah, that was a very, very beautiful run. I understand you and your teammates are uh, going to be pretty busy now New Year's Day, huh? Yes, sir. We're going to be playing rice in the Cotton Bowl. We hope to have a real good time down there. I'm sure you will. Jim, uh, I know that uh, a lot of young men who uh, watched the game yesterday and who are looking right now are interested in finding out if they might be eligible to go to West Point or Annapolis. Just who can go? Well, I think there's a misconception. Most people think you have to be some super intellectual to uh, make West Point or Annapolis, but I think it's just a, a normal graduate can make it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to hear. I'd like to mention just now briefly one other thing that the Army as well as the Navy is very interested in. It's a new stadium which is going to be built on the grounds of the Naval Academy at Annapolis, Maryland. It'll be known as the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, being built by public contributions only. So if you'd like to help, send your contributions to the stadium fund, P.O. Box 777, Annapolis, Maryland. Gentlemen, the best of luck to you. We've been honored to have you with us tonight. I know a lot of you have seen a wonderful panel show called To Tell the Truth. Well, in just a moment, we're going to give you our version of that program. And now, while the fellows are setting the stage for that uh, particular sketch, we're going to give you just a little advice as to what you can expect if you tune in next week to see our program. Here's tonight's lovely billboard girl, Miss Pat Paul. Here's Pat. <laughs> That must be a pleasant noise for a young lady when you hear the audience go ooh when you walk out. Pat, what's your hometown? Elmont, Long Island. Elmont, Long Island. Well, we're happy to have you here with us tonight. Now, you have a lot of friends out there watching in Elmont. Now, next week, we'll have Peter Lawford with us. We'll also have Sal Minio. And Guy Lombardo and all the band. Shelley Berman, very clever young comic and the wonderful Rosemary Clooney, and our own group of fellows. And Pat Falk, I hope we'll have you with us very soon again. Thank you very much. Now, Errol Flynn and I will, uh, and Martha Ray and the whole gang will be getting together for the sketch I mentioned. But first, we want you to take a look at Greyhound's new Cena Cruiser service, the safe, all-weather, dependable way to travel. Here it is. Announcing a brand new idea in bus travel. Smooth as a feather, comfortable as floating on air. It's Greyhound's exclusive new Cena Cruiser service. The year-round, all-weather, dependable way to travel. Featuring these four extra comforts that make driving yourself old-fashioned. One, controlled air conditioning. Cool in summer, warm in winter. Two, picture window vision for every passenger. Three, air suspension ride for easy chair comfort. And four, a completely equipped washroom. No wonder Greyhound Cena Cruiser service makes driving yourself old-fashioned.
Relaxing while we're riding in a Greyhound bus We're seeing all the scenery in Comfort Plus It's such a comfort to take the bus And leave the driving to us In a Greyhound bus Lucky us in a Greyhound bus Friends, you'll find both these buses on scenic cruiser service yeah. The single level and the dual level Whichever you take, remember this, you don't pay one penny extra for Greyhound's new Scenic Cruiser service. A long time ago, back in the early days of television, the panel show since that time has remained one of the most popular forms of entertainment. Now tonight is a special tribute to this type of program. Steve Allen and his guests would like to present a panel show of their own. To tell a lie. <laughs> yes, indeed, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome once again to America's favorite panel show, To Tell a Lie. It's a very simple game. One of our three guests is a well-known celebrity. And it's up to you, the viewers at home, to stay home. And it's up to our panel here in the studio to figure out who is a big liar. Now, what is your name, please? My name is Errol Flynn. <laughs> And what is your name, please? My name is Errol Flynn. And what is your name, please? My name is Errol Flynn. All right, gentlemen, I have here a sworn affidavit which I would like to read to you. It says, I have been in motion pictures since 1935. My first movie, Captain Blood, made me a star overnight. I was under contract to Warner Brothers for many years and was voted one of the top ten money makers in the industry. I have led an adventurous and dangerous life. I've been married three times. I've sailed, the, <laughs> sailed seven seas on my yacht and have written two books and many magazine articles. At one time, I was a light heavyweight boxing champion. <laughs> and made the semifinals of the Olympics. I am best known as a swashbuckling lover <laughs> and am famous throughout the whole world as a ladies' man. Signed, Errol Flynn. <laughs> now, all three claim to be Errol Flynn. Two of these gentlemen are phonies. All right, panel, here we come. Let's see how sharp you are over there. It's up to you to figure out which one is the real Errol Flynn. Now, on tonight's panel, we have, of course, our wonderful regulars. First of all, the very lovely, there she is by George, that's Polly Wanacracker. <laughs> Polly is the young and talented, the young and very talented song stylist who has a show of her own, the Dinah Shore Show. And also, I'm sure that you, <laughs> sure that you recall seeing her not long ago in the Henry Morgan story. <laughs> Well, there's an early picture now. Next to her, we have the famous actor, Ralph Bellboy. <laughs> Ralph just came in. Ralph just came in from Philadelphia, where his new hit show closed in rehearsal. And next to him, <laughs> next to him is that lovely singer and actress, Kitty Carlotte. <laughs> and you no doubt, you no doubt remember her performance in that stirring horror musical, Dr. Jekyll Meets the Karaoke. And last, Last but not least, my friends, columnist and man about town, High Gargoyle. There he is. <laughs> his latest book, his latest book, I Know Who Told Marie Tory, is now on your newsstand. <laughs> all right, panel, we're going to start the questioning, first of all, with the beautiful girl with the big smile, Polly Wanacracker. Number two, where were you born? Tasmania. Tasmania? Well, uh, what is Tasmania famous for? Uh, Tasmanians? Oh, it's the only place that has them. Oh. Uh, number one, when you made the adventures of Robin Hood, what was her pet name for you when, you know, Olivia de Havilland? Yes, of course. She called me Poopsie. <laughs> and I number called her de Hav. <laughs> number three, says here, you once worked as a pearl fisherman. Now, just how do you go about telling which oysters have the pearls in them? Well, that's easy. You just look for the married ones. They're already irritated. <laughs> All right, now, we're going to move along here. We'll hear next from Ralph Bellboy. Ralph? Number two, who is your publicity agent? 
Uh, publicity agent? Yeah. <laughs> publicity agent? I, I don't know. I can get into trouble on my own time. <laughs> I need a publicity agent like uh, Yul Brunner needs a haircut. Tell me. <laughs> If, uh, if you're really a movie star, you'll know the answer to this one. If you make a picture in Europe, do you get paid in American dollars or in foreign currency? <laughs> Odd question. I don't know. <sighs> My salary is generally attached, but... <laughs> I see. Number three. Number three. The real Errol Flynn was a good, light, heavyweight boxer. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Could you take a punch on the chin? Yes, I was very rugged. Could you take it in the stomach? Oh, yes, I liked it all over. <laughs> Number one, being a seafaring man, you should know the answer to this one. What's the difference between port and starboard? Well, uh, I know port, but I never drank starboard. <laughs> all right, and now we'll continue the questioning with Miss Kitty Carlotte. Uh, can I kiss him? No, 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 no. Come on. In this show, it's just questions. That's it. Uh, number two. Uh, yeah? Number two? Yeah? <laughs> what are you doing tonight? No, please. <laughs> Enough of that. What? Well, what am I doing tonight? Yes, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm just going home to read a book. Well, Probably. that's not Earl Flynn. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one. Um, how many Warner Brothers are there? One. Yeah. I thought I had him for a minute there. <laughs> uh, look, uh, uh, um, number one, when you're in New York City, uh, tell me, uh, what hotel do you stay at? The Park South Hotel. Yes, uh, number two, uh, what's number your room number? Hmm? Oh, uh, mine is uh, 1425. What's care of hunting and hard, but... Huh. <laughs> uh, will 8.30 be too early? Yes. 7.30? 6.30? Please. 2 o'clock? Miss Carlotte. Oh, 1 o'clock. Oh, no, wait. Just one more question. I, I, I have it. I have it. I, I think I've got it right. Uh, look, uh, when you were doing The Adventures of Don Juan, uh, number three, that is, I'm a little confused. <laughs> what you said the number was? 114? Yeah. When you were doing The Adventures of Don Juan, number three, uh, how many women did you make love to? Twenty-two. <laughs> it got so bad I had to use a stuntman for the kissing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yes, very charming. Uh, number two, um, what's your latest picture? Oh, me again? Oh, my pe latest picture? Your latest picture. This is Darrell Zanuck's latest hit, The Sun Also Rises. Now playing at your neighborhood theater at popular prices. It's an exciting movie, brilliantly acted. And right now, of course, I am making the movie version, darling, of Diana Barrymore's famous bestseller, Too Much Too Soon. I played the part of Jack Barrymore, naturally marvelously. Gee, what a blabbermouth. <laughs> I guess your time is oh, coming please, up, Miss Carlisle. Oh, just a minute, please. I know ours is. But may I ask one more question? I'm sure yes, I have it now. I sure I have. Uh, uh, number two. <laughs> number two. Um, <laughs> this, uh, would you please do me a favor? Uh, of course. Look at me and say, darling, I cannot live without you. I love you. Kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> darling, I love you. I cannot live without you. Kiss me. Well, sir, we're having a little... We're going to move right along here, I guess, to our next panelist, Hi Gargoyle. There he is. Hi, it's up to you. Oh, hi, Steve. <laughs> I've been studying you, and I've come to this conclusion. The three of you are lying. <laughs> Now, according to my deductions, the real Errol Flynn is an athlete and moves with the grace of a cat. Number two, let me hear you say meow. <laughs> meow. Not bad for a man, but lousy for a cat. <laughs> Number one, will you please stop playing with your inkwell and pay attention? <laughs> now, did you ever get cut while dueling? Did you ever get caught while dueling? Yes, once in a duel with Basil Rathbun. I was doing this. 
I cut the whole hand. <laughs> Did it hold up the picture? No. I have a stand-in who does nothing but bleed for me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We have no more questions and our bell is broken. But, panel, your time is up, and it's time now to vote, and we'll find out right now which one of these distinguished gentlemen is the real Errol Flynn. Polly, tell us, whom do you vote for? I voted for number one. Why? Uh... <coughs> the only number you had on your desk, no, I guess. No, <laughs> he seems more at ease in front of the camera. I think he does, too. What about you, Ralph? I voted for number two. He seems so bored with it all. <laughs> all right, and you, Kitty? Well, I voted for number three. See, he's been giving me the eye all evening. You crazy nut, you. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Hi? I voted for number one. I have to. This is the card they gave me. <laughs> well, thank you, panel. Now, will the real Errol Flynn please stand up? <laughs> Now, number one, number one, would you please tell us what you do and who you really are? Well, my name is Gordon Hathaway, and I'm from Manhattan, and I don't do anything. I'm a man on the street. It's well, just a big fine. party. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Now, we're running a little late. Number two, would you please tell us who you are and what you do? Oh, me? Oh, yes. Well, now, if you have to hear the truth, my name is Herman Kuppelmeyer, and I'm a truck driver from the Bronx. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. We certainly have enjoyed... We certainly have enjoyed having you with us tonight, and for you, Mr. Flynn... Call me Errol. Oh, thank you, Errol. <laughs> I just want to thank you so much for taking time out from your very busy schedule to appear on our show to tell a lie. Well, it was a pleasure, Steve, and Steve, I have a little request to make. Certainly. What is it? I'd like to donate my check to this truck driver from the Bronx. He looks like he needs it. Well, that's a wonderful gesture. That's it for tonight, folks. Don't fail to join us again next week when we play to tell a lie. Good night. <laughs> Martha Ray is going to sing a number for you now in a second or two after I tell you about this. You know, to some folks, cold weather means skiing and skating, but to most of us, it more often means sniffling and sneezing. Now, around here, though, we've learned when we start to come down with a cold to reach for a cold lean liquid cold medicine because it brings feelable relief in minutes. If you start a cold with a sore throat, which is what I do, well, relief begins the instant cold lean touches those inflamed membranes. You have sniffles, sneezes, stuffed up nose, well, choline goes right to work to open up nasal passages. It has you breathing normally in minutes. Tremendously effective. Now, if by any chance you start with that miserable ache all over feeling, well, choline brings quick relief for tight chest and aching muscles. So if your cold starts with coughing, choline relieves those cough spasms. It's a fact. Choline can catch your cold at any of its five stages. So do as we do around here. Make sure that you've got choline Liquid cold medicine, the most powerful cold medicine you can buy without a prescription. You know, we all think so highly of Martha Ray as a comedian that sometimes we lose sight of the fact that she's also one of our great vocalists. You folks, incidentally, over in Philadelphia will be particularly pleased when I tell you that Martha opens at the Latin Casino tomorrow night. But here's a little preview of her Latin Casino show as she sings Come Rain or Come Shine. Here we are.
forget when you met me. It was just one of those things. But don't ever bet me. I'm gonna be true if you let me. You're gonna love me like nobody's loved me. Come rain or come shine. Happy together, unhappy together. Too bad, you just waxed it and now it's spotted. And now you'll wax all over again. If that had only been Johnson's self-polishing stride on that floor, though you wipe up a spill right away or later, this is the wax that spills can spot. Stride dries to a rich luster without polishing. But from then on, liquid stride protects like paste wax. That water? Watch this splash test in slow motion. You see, just beads up, doesn't penetrate stride's waxy film. A damp mop or cloth white spills away without a trace even after they've dried. Time after time, you can bring back Stride shine without re-waxing. Now, with Stride on your floor, spills like this, accidents, drips and splashes, no problem. Stride can take it and come shining through. Though you mop up right away or later, this is the wax that spills can't spot. Try Stride.